In this video, we'll demonstrate how to use TensorFlow object detection to determine the relative location of the gold mineral. Box now includes Google TensorFlow Lite object detection, which is Google's machine learning technology to identify and track objects. TensorFlow Lite is a lightweight version of Google's TensorFlow machine learning technology that is designed to run on mobile devices such as an Android smartphone. A trained TensorFlow model was developed to recognize the gold and silver mineral game pieces from the 2018-2019 First Tech Challenge game. This TensorFlow model has been integrated into the First Tech Challenge control system software and can be used to identify and track these game pieces during a match. The, Tensor, the TensorFlow Lite technology requires Android version 6.0, also known as Marshmallow, or a more recent version. ZTE phones use an older Android version which does not support TensorFlow, while more recent phones like the Motorola Moto G4 use a more recent version of Android and support TensorFlow Lite. You can use a sample blocks op mode called Concept TensorFlow Object Detection as a starting point. Start by creating a new op mode and selecting Concept TensorFlow Object Detection from the drop down list on the Create New Op Mode dialog box. Press OK to create the new op mode. Your new op mode will appear in the editing pane of the screen. Let's take a look at the initial blocks in the op mode. This block initializes the Vuforia library on the Android robot controller. This is needed because the TensorFlow Lite library will receive image data from the Vuforia library. In this example, the Enable Camera Monitoring option is set to fault. This means that there won't be a Vuforia preview window on the robot controller screen. The op mode then initializes the TensorFlow library and enables a camera monitoring window that the user can use to see an image with the TensorFlow data on the robot controller screen. The image includes bounding boxes around the objects that are currently detected and recognized. The object tracker parameter is set to true so that the object tracker will be used in addition to the TensorFlow interpreter to keep track of the locations of detected objects. The object tracker interpolates object recognitions so that the results are smoother than they would be if the system was solely relying on the TensorFlow interpreter. The confidence level is set to 40%. This means that the TensorFlow library needs to have a confidence level of 40% or higher in order to consider an object as being detected in the field of view. You can adjust this parameter to a higher value if you would like the system to be more selective in identifying an object. The confidence level for a detected target will be displayed near the bounding box of the identified object when the object tracker is enabled. For example, a value of 0.92 indicates a 92% confidence that the object has been identified correctly. The origin of the coordinate system is in the upper left-hand corner of the image. The horizontal x-coordinate value increases as you move from left to right of the image. The vertical y-coordinate value increases as you move from the top to the bottom of the image. When an object is identified by the TensorFlow library, the op mode can read the left, right, top, and bottom values associated with the detected object. These values correspond to the location of the left, right, top, and bottom boundaries of the detection box for that object. These values are in pixel coordinates of the image from the camera. After the op mode receives a start command from the driver station, the op mode will activate the TensorFlow detector. The op mode will then check with the object detector to see how many objects it recognizes in the field of view. The variable recognitions is set to the list of objects that were recognized using the TensorFlow technology. The op mode generates a telemetry message so that the number of objects detected in the camera's field of view is displayed on the driver station. If the number of detected objects equals 3, the op mode will loop through the list of recognized objects and look at the label for each recognized object. If an object has a label that indicates it's a gold mineral, 
then the left coordinate value of its bounding box will be assigned to the variable gold mineral X. If the other two objects in the list have labels that indicate that they are silver minerals, then their left coordinate values will be assigned to the variables silver mineral 1x and silver mineral 2x. The op mode then checks to see if it has three valid x coordinates for the gold and two silver minerals. If it does, it compares the gold x coordinates with the other two values. If the gold x value is the lowest, indicating the gold mineral is leftmost, then the gold mineral is in the left position and a telemetry block sends that information to the driver station. If the x value is the highest, indicating the gold mineral is rightmost, the gold mineral is in the right position. Otherwise, the gold mineral is in the center position. Here we see the, the driver station phone with the position of the gold mineral displayed. The system interprets images based on the phone's orientation, either portrait or landscape, at the time that the TensorFlow object detector was created and initialized. In our example, if you execute the TensorFlow object detection initialize block while the phone is in the portrait mode, then the images will be processed in portrait mode. The left and right values of an object's bounding box correspond to the horizontal coordinate values, while the top and bottom values of an object bounding box correspond to the vertical coordinate values. If the phone is in landscape mode when the object detector is initialized, then the images will be interpreted in landscape mode. Android devices can be locked into portrait mode so that the screen image will not rotate even if the phone is held in landscape orientation. If your phone is locked in portrait mode, then the TensorFlow object detector will interpret all objects as portrait images. If you would like to use the phone in landscape mode, then you need to make sure that your phone is set to auto-rotate. In auto-rotate mode, if the phone is held in a landscape orientation, then the screen will auto-rotate to display the contents in landscape form. Next, we'll take a look at how we might navigate based on recognizing a gold mineral. To ensure that DC motor power blocks are available in the activator's tray, you'll need to create a config file on your robot controller phone that includes a left motor and a right motor. Use the link on the screen to access a separate video on creating config files. Let's start by adding blocks that set a gold location variable to minus one, zero, or plus one, according to whether the gold mineral is on the left, the center, or on the right. We start by creating the gold location variable. We then add a block that sets the variable to minus one if the gold is on the left. We then duplicate the block and set the value to positive 1 for the case that the gold is on the right. We then duplicate it again, and this time we set the value to 0 to indicate that we found the gold in the center. Once the location of the gold minerals have been determined, we need to stop looking for the mineral and cause the robot to move. To break out of the loop looking for the minerals, we get a breakout of loop block from the loops tray and we place it just after the code that determines the location of the gold mineral. We duplicate the telemetry update so that it will occur before the breakout. Reverse the direction of the left motor. Then we place an if do else if else block.
We'll use it to set the motor powers to cause the robot to turn left if the gold is on the left and to the right if it's on the right. If the gold is in the center, no move is needed. For the left case, indicated by minus one, we select a dual power block from the dual tray under actuator's DC motor. We then change the power value so the left motor is set to minus 0.15 and the right motor is set to plus 0.15. This block should be executed when the gold location variable has a value of minus one. We duplicate that comparison and place it in the else if case and change it so it checks for a value of zero. We then duplicate the set power block and place the duplicate in the do case, which corresponds to the gold mineral being in the center. Since we don't need to move in that case, we set both power values to zero. The remaining case is when goal location is plus one. So we duplicate the power block again to cause the robot to turn slightly right. We set the left power to positive 0.15 and the right motor power to negative 0.15. We then want to delay for a very short period of time to give the motors a chance to move the robot. This is calibrated in milliseconds. We'll set it to 200 milliseconds, which is two tenths of a second. After two tenths of a second has elapsed, we need to turn the motors off. To do that, we use another power block with the values zero for both motor powers. We change the type of the op mode to autonomous because this op mode will be operated during the autonomous period without using the game controller. Now we save it so it's available to run on the robot controller. Let's see if it does what we want. The gold mineral is on the left and the robot turns left. Now we move the gold mineral to the right and the robot turns right. Finally, we move the mineral to the middle. The robot doesn't need to move. It doesn't. That's what we want. When we're finished using TensorFlow object detection, we need to deactivate it to free up resources. In this example, the op mode didn't activate the Vuforia tracking feature and only activated the TensorFlow object detection. If you want to incorporate Vuforia image detection and tracking, you'll also need to activate the Vuforia tracking feature by adding an activate block. Later in your op mode, you'll also need to deactivate Vuforia by adding a deactivate block. Both this deactivate and the TensorFlow object detection deactivate should be moved to later in the op mode if you continue to use either of these features in the op mode. We've seen how TensorFlow allows a robot to recognize an object and navigate based on that recognition. You may be able to use these ideas to create an op mode that helps you score points during the autonomous period.